Hello and welcome to the monthly briefing for February. I have three main messages for you today and these relate to our financial challenge, confidentiality and the preparations we're all making for the CQC inspection in May. But firstly, I want to update you on the process for recruiting a new Chief Executive. There was a successful recruitment process and many of you took part including service users and carers, commissioners and the Trust Development Authority. There is a further national ratification process which has to conclude before an announcement can be made. So for the time being, I remain as the Acting Chief Executive. You will have seen the information coming out on our space and to all teams about the financial situation in which we find ourselves at the moment. There are many ways in which we're trying to meet this challenge, but I want to underline the importance to us all of meeting the challenge. Let's remember that in the long term, if we want to remain in charge of our own destiny and our decisions, we must take control of our finances. You're all making such a great effort. And here's a reminder of some of the other things that we can do. If you're able to, Please delay submission of travel claims until April. If you have a trust mobile phone, mobile to mobile calls are cheaper than calls between a mobile and a landline. It's amazing that we could save £41,000 between now and the end of March if we stop printing. And again, if, you're, if you are able to, and if you want to, you can take unpaid leave. You can sacrifice your salary before the end of March, but you are able to carry over your annual leave until next year. That could represent a half a million pounds saving for us before the end of this financial year. Quite simply, we all need to do everything we can to reduce our costs before year end. The good news is that our historic underlying financial issues are in hand, so once this year's challenge is met, we will not be carrying over a deficit into next year. That's important, because a deficit that we take with us into next year simply means the need for greater savings next year. And now confidentiality. We're all aware of the need to protect patients' confidentiality. But sometimes I think this creates a fear amongst clinicians about sharing information and we err on the side of not sharing even when we should. As a clinician myself, I want to say please be confident about sharing information with users, carers and other agencies because in the long run this improves care and understanding for everyone. The countdown to our inspection in May has begun. The most important thing to remember is that together we can demonstrate to the CQC the quality and the consistency of the care that we provide. We now have a CQC project team being run by Phil Cooper and this team will lead our preparations. There will be a central point for providing information to the CQC both prior to and during their visits. The team will provide advice and guidance and advice to all staff before, during and after the inspection. We'll develop a suite of resources and information about the inspection and these will include a staff booklet, a pack for managers with helpful checklists, information for our service users and carers and an hour space page which will include useful links and frequently asked questions. There will be mock inspections taking place involving staff to help you feel prepared. Over the coming weeks there will be further CQC bulletins relating to each of the five CQC domains. There will be key messages, a reminder of trust-wide standards including the work which has come out of the Quality Forum and examples of questions that you may be asked relating to each of the domains. And so finally, we work hard every day to improve the lives of our service users and their families. 
Sometimes when mental health is in the spotlight, it's associated with criticism or negativity. This month, we've seen the publication of the Mental Health Task Force report, and we have the Mental Health Week on the BBC. And so perhaps finally, there is some recognition of the need for greater investment and development of mental health services. In AWP, we're in a good position to take advantages of the opportunities that may follow. Just another reason for making sure we meet our financial challenge this year. Thank you for joining me on this February monthly briefing. If you do have any further questions or comments, please continue to email them through to us.